Hey everybody, it's Jay. Uh, if you've looked at my channel at all, you know that I love doing architectural photography. A lot of my videos surround architectural photography, the shoot, the post-processing. Um, one of the issues though that you have with architectural photography is distortion. Because often I'm using a wide angle lens. Wide angle lens is not really a natural way of looking at the world. And if that lens is tilted anyway, typically up a little bit, or off to the right or left, you do get distortion. Uh, sometimes I like that distortion, it looks kinda cool, but there are other times where it's not that great. Now, if you have a tilt-shift lens uh, on your camera, you can deal with that distortion. Uh, I don't have a tilt-shift lens. I'm using a regular wide-angle lens, typically my 16 to 35 Nikon lens. Um, so when I'm in post, if I don't love that distortion, again, I can sort of deal with that. Um, today I'm gonna to talk about one particular way, and that's the perspective warp tool in Photoshop. So let's jump onto my computer, I'll go through some examples, and I think I'm gonna give you some tools uh, in your photography uh, that you can use if you wanna deal with that distortion you typically get with a wide angle lens. So let's jump onto the computer now. Okay, here I am on my computer. I am in Photoshop. Uh, this is a shot I took several years ago. It's actually a museum up in the Hudson Valley part of New York State, near Cold Spring, New York. Uh, and I really like it. I love the contrast. I love the highlights and shadows, this, the geometric shapes. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, it was taken with a very wide-angle lens, and you do have that distortion. Um, there are many ways of fixing distortion when you're in Photoshop or Lightroom. If you were in Lightroom, you could go to the transformation tool, uh, just hit auto, and it would do its best to straighten out these lines and make it less distorted. Uh, I did that, it worked okay. Um, what I'm going to show you today though is a tool that gives you more flexibility. Uh, it requires a bit more work, but again, you'll have more flexibility and that is the Perspective Warp Tool. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is make a copy of the background layer. So I'm gonna hit Command-J, I'm on a Mac, you'd hit Control-J if you were on a Windows machine. I'm gonna go up to Edit, go down to Perspective Warp. And once you hit Perspective Warp, then you want to start essentially highlighting the different planes of the image that you want to manipulate. Uh, and so uh, when I do it, you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about. So there's this plane on the left side, this bright spot of the building that I first want to work on. And so I'm going to drag out a rectangle. Uh, and then you want to just align, certainly for the first one, align it as well as you can with the corners of that plane. So I'm gonna put that there, that one there, and you wanna follow the shape of the plane. So I'm gonna move this up and move this one down. And so you get a sense. I've kind of identified that plane, highlighted it pretty well, and, uh, and I was able to make that quote selection. Now there's other planes in this image. You have this one in deep shadow, then the wall on the far right. So let's pick that as well. Now I'm gonna make another uh, rectangle here. If I do it right, if I'm close enough to the edge, anytime you have a plane that abuts another plane using this tool, it will kind of click right into place. So if I come down, yep, we got that. Clicks right into place, so the, the two are perfectly aligned. And then I just want to pull these up to uh, accurately depict this plane. And then lastly, we've got this one on the far right. And I'm, again, I'm gonna pull down, move over. That should click right into place, which it does. I'll pull this up here to make sure I got the same exact shape of, uh, of the plane. I'll pull this up. Okay, so now we've kind of made these quote selections. They're not really selections, but we're highlighting the different parts of the image that we want to manipulate. Now, if you look in the upper left, you see we're in layout mode now. If I click over to warp, 
this will allow me now to make some changes. Now, before I do that, there are some other options. <clears throat> if you wanted to, you can click this button and you would automatically straighten near vertical lines uh, to make things, again, less distorted. Same thing from a horizontal standpoint, or this one does both. Uh, I've tried that, and when I do that, because this thing is so distorted, it really changes it too much, and it looks nothing like what, uh, what I want it to. So I'm going to use the flexibility that's built into this tool and, and kind of make the changes. So you want to essentially click on these uh, points, and then you can move them. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay. you got to be patient, but if I want to make that vertical, I can do that. And what's happening now, of course, is all the planes are adjusting to it. And if I move this one over, you'll see both of those other two planes are, are moving and adjusting. Now again, I'm not going to get this perfect because uh, you know it's very distorted. But I want to get it maybe a little bit more realistic. Here I can pull this down a little bit. Um, now when you start making changes with other points, uh, other things change. You kind of have to go back and it's a bit of a trial and error methodology um, when, you, when you're doing this. But again, you want to kind of get it to the way you want to. I'm going to move this back over a bit. And this I can pull down here. Uh, so you're getting a pretty good sense of, of what I'm doing. Uh, when you're, you're reasonably satisfied after you play with it a bit, make yourself a little nuts here, uh, you want to hit the check mark up here, which I will do. So just to give you a sense of the before and after, here's the before and here is the after. A little bit more realistic, a little less distorted. Now we do have one problem. If I turn off the background layer, you'll see that on the left, uh, we have some pixels that kind of disappeared. And so you will need to deal with that. But these days, that's pretty easy. You know, if I just take uh, a polygonal lasso tool and kind of make a quick selection around this one on the lower left, and then go to my generative fill box and just hit enter. Don't type anything in, just hit enter. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but the computer is gonna fill it in as best as it believes it can. And I gotta tell you, it does a good job as you can see. Uh, the one up here as well, this one I could probably just uh, do pretty easily. If I go in here and hit enter, this one uh, again is a pretty easy one. You do have some light rays there, but <clears throat> generally it's just a dark piece of the, uh, of the image. <clears throat> so there you go. Um, give you a sense. Here's the uh, before, and then here is the after. Let me give you some other examples. So here is a building I shot in Lower Manhattan. This is uh, 8 Spruce Street, designed by Frank Gehry. A fantastic building all the way downtown. Um, you don't have to have multiple panels when you're doing this, multiple panes. So if I go up to Edit, Perspective Warp, I'm going to drag out. Well, before I do that, you know what I want to do is make a copy of the background layer. So I'll hit Command J. Again, just so we can see a before and after. So let's go up to uh, Perspective Warp. I'm going to drag out a, uh, tri a rectangle. And I'll start to try to mimic the shape of, this, uh, of the plane of this building, really the front of the building. Uh, the top should be relatively level. The bottom is not quite vertical, maybe off to the right a little bit. And that gives you a sense. So let's move over here. We'll do warp. And I can start, you know, manipulating things. I can pull this over, this over. Again, the idea is I want to make this kind of somewhat vertical. Pull this over, pull this one over. So you can see what's happening. It's becoming uh, much more vertical in nature. I didn't mind it before, by the way. I think it's kind of cool at an angle, but uh, here we're doing it uh, maybe a little bit more proper and a real absolutist would want to see something more like this. I'm going to hit the check mark, assuming it's reasonably good. So here's the before and here is the after. Now we got another problem here, and that is if I turn off the background layer, we lost pixels. Uh, once again, we can adjust that 
with uh, by using all the tools we have. So if I go up to uh, a polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to make a selection around this these missing pixels on the lower left, and I'll use generative fill. I'm going to uh, click in there, hit enter, and we'll see how good a job Photoshop does in filling in these pixels. This is kind of a tricky one because this building is very unique. Uh, again, it's probably not going to be perfect, but let's hope it's reasonably good. We have a bunch of choices. This is the first choice. This is the second choice, which is more realistic. Uh, third choice? No, I think that second choice, that's really good. Uh, and then this top corner, this will be really easy. We just kind of click around it. And again, go into our generative fill box, hit enter. And this should do a pretty good job of filling in that blue sky. And I'll show you again the before and after. Uh, yeah, there you go. So here's the before, quite tilted. Again, interesting, arguably, but here's the after. Uh, some would say that's much better, um, but a, a great tool. Let's do one more example. Let's see. Yeah, this was a, a shot I took uh, of a building in Manhattan. It's actually on my way to work back, back when I was working on Wall Street. It's probably about five, six years ago. And it was a really tough one because I love the minimalistic aspect of this building, but I had to point the camera up. I wasn't sitting right in the middle of it. And so it really, it just seems kind of off to me. So let's first make a copy of the background layer. I'm going to hit Command J to do that. I'm going to go up to the uh, Perspective Warp tool. I'm going to drag out a, um, a grid and start to adjust it so it's kind of more aligned with uh, the shape of this, uh, of this image as it is now. Uh, it's not exact, but you know, it's pretty close. I could bring this down a little bit, bring this down a little bit. And just to give you a sense uh, of the distortion that we're looking at here, that should do it. Uh, I'm going to go over to Warp, and I'm going to start to kind of get it closer to vertical. I don't think I'm gonna, it's going to be perfect, but I want it to be a little bit closer. I can pull this up a little bit, pull this up a little bit and now we are let me see it's a little bit of a delay as I move it but that is pretty good let me pull it over and maybe a tad more yeah that's not bad so here's the well, let's hit the check mark here's the before here's the after Again, I'm going to have to uh, just deal with that. Uh, those missing pixels on the far left, that'll probably just crop out. But um, I, ho I hope this is helpful. Listen, this is just another tool, right? There's a lot of tools in Photoshop, but this is one that can be very handy when it comes to architectural photography. Uh, if you did like the video, it does help the channel just to give me a thumbs up, a like. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, uh, architecture, Photoshop tutorials, a lot of landscape stuff on my channel. I'm doing photo critiques now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Uh, and until next time.